Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for the more survivalists. In this case, I'd like to talk about mask respirators for coronavirus. It's one of those topics that unfortunately has been politicized to a great extent. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of false information floating around. Unfortunately, it's been a lot of the mainstream media doing that. At first denying that there was a, a serious threat, then saying that you didn't need any kind of mask or respirator, then saying that you need it, then saying that it was mandatory. So what's the real thing? What's, what's the real take on all of this? Look, I, I've been talking about this since day one. I mean, literally, uh, last year, January 28th, I think it was, I did a, an interview with, with uh, David Jones, who's a, an expert on biological, chemical, uh, and nuclear warfare protection. And we were talking about, yeah, this type of thing, about uh, nuclear uh, protection. And we were talking also about this virus that was starting to spread from China. And we we're talking about how it could be a very real thing, a very real problem. David actually mentioned, I think, the 1980s pandemic and how that was one of the uh, disasters worldwide that caused you know, millions of dead. So when we started talking about this virus coming from China, one of the things David Jones mentioned was that, yeah, you want to have your N95 respirators. The N95 respirators that some idiot in CNN called the gold standard against COVID, that is not, not a gold standard. That's what 3M you usually would recommend as a minimum standard. If you do your homework, and this is, seems to be too much to ask for some journalists, but man, just go to a 3M website. There's a pile of information. Some of these companies have been working on this since day one. These companies have been specializing on, on protective equipment for, for decades, for years they've been doing this, and you have a lot to read. One of the things you find out when you do that actually is, yeah, the N95 is going to be filtering 95% of the particles that you inhale through the material. For example, these would be, and you have different ratings, like the N95 would be the American standard, a P2 would be the, the European similar to that P2 would be these are P2 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 these ones as well um, P3 would be similar to the N99 or the N100 mask the N99 filters 99% 90, of, of, of the particles in the air the N100 filters 99.9% .9 or a little bit more of those particles then you have the the HEPA filters high efficiency particle air filters which filter again over 99.9% .9 of the of the, of the particles, which you usually have on, on you know, actual gas masks. And that is combined with uh, an amount of, of act activated uh, charcoal that filters gases, fogs, and that sort of thing. You know, typical thing that you hear people mention, I'm wearing a mask and I still feel smells, then I can get sick. Well, it's not so much like that, but maybe a little bit it is. It, what's basically showing that it's not filtering anything. You don't feel any smells with this baby here. Nothing goes through this. I mean, of course, nothing Nothing gives you 100% spot accurate protection. There's no such thing. This is the closest maybe to it. And by this, I mean either this mask, this is my GSR respirator. You have similar uh, the latest gen respirators that offer the same kind of, of protection. That's nothing compared to what you get from an N95. An N95 is a lot more basic. Again, N95 or FFP2 like this one. Um, this is a, a properly rated FFP2. So this is going to be filtering, this material is going to be filtering 95% of the particles in the air. 3M in its own uh, reading material, and, and it's very interesting, I suggest you visit uh, 3M's website and read some of the information and studies they have. Uh, for a number of reasons, they, they conclude that it's going to be filtering uh, even some of the smaller particles that would go through because of, of, uh, because of static, it gets you know, uh, is stuck and it doesn't go through. For a number of reasons, it gives you an, uh, let's call it an adequate level of protection, all right? So N95 masks give you an adequate level of protection for an airborne, um, flu-like disease like COVID, all right? That's why it's been always, and this is something that survivalists have been onto for many years. You've had survivalists that have been preparing for a worldwide pandemic you know, since they started. It was maybe their biggest concern. You know, and they stock up on, on N95s, or even better, they stock up and have actual respirators, which are even better. Now, the thing that is not officially giving you, and this is a fact, this is not an opinion of mine, these uh, surgical masks, they don't have any kind of rating of filtering anything for a number of reasons. Most of all, because it's not sealing around your face in, in, in any shape or form. It just cannot guarantee any kind of filtration. So a surgical mask, what's the 
Occasionally it's used. Well, it's used by a surgeon, therefore it's named, by a guy that is operating on someone cuts uh, a person in half, you know, doing surgery, and he's talking maybe with a nurse, and he's wearing this, so as to not literally spit in that person's guts while operating on the patient. That's basically it. And maybe they give this to a patient as well, someone that is spitting his lungs out, and this is just making life easier for the nurse, instead of spitting uh, pieces of lung all over the place, some of that, you know, uh, blood and, and tissue is going to be getting caught here. That's basically all you're going to be getting in terms of official level of protection from one of these. It just, I mean, it, it just doesn't uh, uh, fit properly. It just doesn't filter properly any way close to an N95. So, Unfortunately, because of the way in which all of this has been politicized, uh, and maybe a, a, like a desperate attempt to actually do anything at all, at least do something. Um, you, you see some people with, with these cloth masks. I mean, if I wrap a shimag around my mouth, is that going to be giving me some kind of protection? Well, in theory, something is always better than nothing, right? I did a video actually of improvising masks with, with a coffee filter. Is a coffee filter going to be, I mean, I take a coffee filter over this because at least it's shape properly so as to avoid uh, some of that um, air going through the sides and you see this all the time folks you see people wearing this and you see their mouths if you literally see someone's mouth open and you see their teeth and tongue imagine what kind of protection it's giving to that person uh, let alone anyone around them uh, one of the most um, uh, uh, horrible things that I've, I've uh, seen politicians and, and journalists repeat time and again was that this was for, for protecting people around you. That is completely false. There's no uh, uh, facts around that statement. This is not going to be protecting anyone around you because each time you exhale, air is still going to be coming out all over the place. Why is it that you think that when you wear something like this and you have your glasses, it fogs up all your glasses? Because you're exhaling that air and it's going around your face like a sprinkler. There's no level, you, there's, this is called personal protection equipment for a reason, because it's supposed to protect the person wearing it. It was never, ever intended to protect people that are around you. It just doesn't work that way. Each time, I mean, each time you exhale, uh, that air is not magically trapped in a parallel dimension. It's still going out the sides and very much like a sprinkler on all directions. At the very least with this, this would be a proper FFP2, so it's actually filtering. These I found years ago that they fit uh, most faces better, so I like these quite a bit. They also have like a little bit, a bit of, a, of a, a foam gasket which improves that seal a little bit more, and it has a, a valve, which means when you're exhaling, instead of the entire mask you know, coming off like these without a valve, every time you exhale, the air just sips on the sides, on, on, in, on all directions. This just uh, concentrates the air down, as you see with that plastic piece. It just throws air down in, in somewhat of the safest possible direction, much better than having that air go to the sides. So in spite of what you may, may have heard, these are actually better than going with these and you know they are, they're better for you and I'm pretty certain that they're better for people around you as well. Uh, I lost count on how many times I saw people with these just <laughs> laughing, coughing, talking and air you see it coming out of all, all directions. This is a lot more focus and in one direction. Um, but this is almost like throwing a, 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 a dice and playing roulette each time you inhale and exhale. N95 means that that's the best possible case, given that you have a mask that's actually fitted for your face, which is not, all, not usually the case. People either have a beard, they have a face that is too big, too small, doesn't fit properly. So that is a very optimistic 95%. Let's give it like 80, 90, whatever. Even in best case, each time you, you inhale and exhale, uh, you're having that 5% chance of inhaling uh, one of those particles. I think that uh, that's okay for maybe being outdoors. Yeah, surrounded by other people, uh, I guess that that would be the case. For example, if I'm um, outdoors in a, in, a, in a public place and there's you know, people around me, I, I see that this could be an option and um, you know, as long as they're not too close. Uh, at least the way I see it, the big problem is indoors. And I think that many studies are, are pointing in fact in that direction, that when you're indoors with that um, air that has been, you know, it's 
full of exhaled air from all other people around you that may or may not have the virus. Unfortunately, the virus is, is spreading more and more and more people are sick and spreading the disease. So each time you are indoors, that is the big problem. At least the way I see it, that's when I want actual maximum protection. I used to use this one. I think this is by far the best protection. This is pretty much very close. And this is the one I've been suggesting all along. So I use this one because it's a little bit less uh, noticeable than the, the bigger mask and it gives you a very good level of protection as well. So you have a 3M mask, I'll leave the link below if I find any of the, these in Amazon. Uh, I think that they're already stocked. A lot of, of you folks bought it. You know, if you bought it and you're going to these places, if you're in an indoor environment with people that may be sick, use it. So this is a mask. It's going to be, this is a key thing. It's going to be sealing properly around your face, around your mouth, your nose. That is a big thing. And then you have these filters that these are FFP3. These are similar to your N100 or your N99 filters. These are going to be filtering over 99% of the particles in the air. All right. Um, and besides, these are reusable. These are non-reusable masks. You, you're supposed to dispose of these. Same for these ones. You're supposed to dispose of these. This one, no, this is reusable. And you see some doctors using it. I've seen some uh, footage from uh, Sweden. Doctors and nurses had actual black masks similar to this one, or uh, the, the 40 millimeter canisters. Yeah, it had actual gas mask properly being worn. Um, so this is what I've seen. I've seen some uh, some uh, doctors and nurses going with an a mask that actually works, and then for PR putting this on top. Oh, they're using two masks. That's so stupid. Well, no, it's it's not so stupid. What they're actually doing is using something that actually works and covering their asses by using what they're telling you to wear, which is of questionable questionable efficiency to say the least. Right? What I suggest doing is is you're gonna you're gonna be doing uh, going indoors, which you want to be avoiding in a public place, supermarket, that sort of thing, go with something like this that actually gives you protection. And if you're told and it's mandatory to have something else on top, put this on top. Like so. You know, screw them. You're going to be protecting yourself. That's the only thing you can do. That's why it's called personal protective equipment, not personal social protective equipment. That is stupid and it's not how these things were designed to be used or work. All right, guys? 3M mask, FFP3, you can go with something even better, but this is a, a very good way to go. No, the N95 is not a golden standard. It's a minimum standard, which is, you know, it's great for, if that's all you have, go with it, and it's going to be a lot better than going with some of the other nonsense, but the gold standard would be like a... a um, MBC filter or very close to that and FFP3 that is basically the same type of HIPAA filter without the activated charcoal adding that fog uh, protection. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Use your common sense by God. That's why you have it. Remember, my books are available below. Street survival skills for self-defense, the kind of violence you're likely to see in these uh, already, right? Uh, unfortunately, and it's likely to become a lot more common. So street survival skills specifically for that, the Modern Survival Manual for Surviving Economic Collapse, both available in Amazon, following the links below. Have an awesome day. See you on our next video. Take care.